Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition.
gracious good morning sports fans and welcome to East Kentwood High School where we will be featuring today the tri meet for Davenport University as they are doing battle with uh, Eastern Illinois and St. Augustine University. So this should be a fun afternoon of swimming. My name is Joey Sutherland. Thank you for joining us here on the Biscuit in the Basket YouTube network. And for about the next two hours, we'll be bringing you some of the best in the area in college swimming. We'll be starting off the day with the one and only heat of the women's 400 yard medley relay. The officials are getting ready. The swimmers have entered the water, as you can see. And we are waiting for that opening start. Let's take a look at who we have in the respective lanes. For the Davenport B team in lane one, it's gonna be Shank, DeCrevit, Engelsma, and Helgren. For Eastern Illinois in their A, it is Veal, Staniert, Glasgow, and Grinter. For St. Augustine's A, it will be Artabi, O'Grady, Anton, Antona, Antonaz, Gute. For Davenport, it's Pinkowitz, Brownrig, Wagner, and Wallace. That's the A in lane five. Again, for St. Andros, it's uh, Pironi, Henson, Steinkamp, Piper. And Davenport C is Horvath, Scott, Underwood, and Gomez Garcia. That's who we have as, uh, although it, it looks like, uh, did we get a scratch? No, all, they're all there, all five teams, lanes two through seven respectively. As we have uh, transitioned here into, from the backstroke into the breaststroke. Remember it goes uh, back, breast, fly free when you are doing the uh, medley relay. It's a little different for the IM. Looks like a pretty comfortable lead right now for the Davenport A out of lane five. As they transition now in, or I beg your pardon, it's a, it's not a 50, it's, it's a hundred. So used to doing the high school. It's the 200 yard medley relay, not the 400. So little difference here, bear with me here, folks. I've done too many different events this week, uh, uh, including high school swimming on Thursday, football on Friday, water polo, uh, high school on Monday, college on Wednesday. It's been a long week. All right, now we transition into the Flyers. Take a look and see who that is. I believe it's Ella Wagner in the lead there for Davenport out of lane five. <clears throat> they were at 2.03, as you can see. Nice addition to the uh, Biscuit in the Basket production um, is the use of a MacBook Pro. And the bit rate is so much better than what I had with my old computer. This is really awesome. Cutting into the lead slightly right now is uh, St. Ambrose. They pulled it back within three lengths, but actually on their heels in lane number two is the Davenport B relay. As we are coming into the last 25 here of the butterfly. And we will end, of course, with the front crawler freestyle. And hitting the wall at 301.30. Their seed time was 402.77, so they should beat this one handily then that battle for second and third place 30592 for Davenport B 306 flat for the St. Ambrose there's the halfway mark there at 326 with a 2499 even if she goes 26 that's going to be a 352 that'll be about a 10 second drop for the Davenport squad On the way home right now. And to the final 15. Cruising right now, just hitting the 350 mark inside the flags. About to hit the wall at 354.11. An eight second drop in first place for the da uh, Davenport A team, which consisted of Pinkowitz, Brownrig, Wagner, and Wallace. 
Strong finish there for the Davenport girls. Second place was Davenport B. Third place, Saginaw, or I beg your pardon, St. Ambrose. Fourth place was Eastern Illinois. And that's going to bring us into our one and only heat for the men in the 400-yard medley relay. For the men, it will be St. Ambrose E relay is going to be in lane number one. St. Ambrose C is in lane number two. Davenport B is in lane number three. St. Ambrose A is in four. Davenport A is in five. St. Ambrose B is in six. And St. Ambrose D is in lane seven. But, yeah, nobody's over in lane eight, so this will be a seven-race relay. Backstrokers are in, and they're off. Take a look at who we have. In lane number one, it's going to be Safta, Valencia, Mio, and Saints. Prull, Noller, Santiago, and Pappas is in two. Sanset, Hall, Popiel, and Jones is in three. Gaber, Pereira, has a sim, has sim, I beg your pardon, and where it is in four. Setlick, Stender, Sizgail and Ruiz de Canis is in five. Munoz, Blair, Gomez, and Jones is in lane six. Taylor, Patterson, Walker, Rozo, and Drolema is in lane number seven. We have now transitioned from the uh, back crawl into, or backstroke, into the uh, breaststroke. With a lead, it looks like right now, let me confirm this on the way back. Looks like it's uh, lane number five, the Davenport A relay. As they're now on the back 50. Keep an eye on this for a minute. Getting ready to transition now into the breaststroke. I, I'm sorry, into the butterfly. Sorry, folks, trying to deal with an issue and get it all fixed so I can get back to you here temporarily. Davenport A at 238.42. Into the freestyle they go. And it will be coming in right now. Looks like a very uh, comfortable lead here for the Davenport A team. And they will hit the wall at 324.73. That's a seven second drop for Setlak, Stender, Sizgail, and Ruiz, Ruiz Decanis.
Our next event will be the 1650. So uh, we'll get the start here after we get the names in. And then we're going to play some music. We'll come back to you after uh, when we get close to the end of that one. That one's going to take about uh, probably 20 to 22 minutes. All right, we are underway. Let's take a look at the lineup here for the women. It will be Michaela Muir is in lane number three for Davenport. Annalise Browser is from St. Ambrose in lane number four. Abigail Wampler, Wampler is in lane number five for Davenport. Bryn Kiley is in lane number six for St. Ambrose. And Erica Babber is from Eastern Illinois in lane seven. Excuse me, folks. Thank you for joining us wherever you're coming from. I know we have people not just throughout the country that are watching this stream, but throughout the world, which is always super cool, and we appreciate it. All right. As I said, folks, uh, this has got a ways to go, so we'll be right back. Keep it here on the Biscuit in the Basket Network.
All right, folks, we are into the final 50 right now, and with a... Let's take a look at who this is. The seed time to beat on this one was actually 19 minutes, and we're going to go well below that here in this race. On the way home right now, after the 1650, also known as the mile, and swimming... And hitting the wall with a time, a great time of 18.15.79 is Bryn Kiley. That's her first time in this one, so that's a personal best. Abigail Wampler goes 18.25.57. And that is a 35 second drop, so very nicely done there for the top two participants. Let's see who's going to get the third spot right here in lane. Uh, that's Michaela Muir, who goes 19 double O. So she went 19 minutes flat with 87 hundredths of a second. And for her, that is a 48 second drop. Wow. Still waiting for fourth place. Might be Barber in lane seven, I believe, and it is. She goes 1928. Folks, that is a three and a half second drop for Barber. And Bowser, who is at 2021, looks like she's going to have a personal best. So it'll be an entire heat of PBs. Personal best as she hits the wall at 1952. And that's a 31 second drop. So a great, great heat of swimming there. Now we are gonna do the same thing for the men. So this will be another about 17 and a half to 18 and a half minutes. It's gonna be Sam Gilham from um, St. Ambrose in lane number two. Michael Nidzalik is in lane number three for Davenport. Jonas Fries is in lane number four for St. Ambrose. Joe Leonard is in Dav for Davenport in lane number five. And Truett Landolt is for St. Ambrose in lane number six. We'll be back in uh, about 15 minutes here, folks. Enjoy the race.
All right, the bell means we're into the final 50 here. It is uh, Jonas Fries with a fine swim. He's been holding around 30 minutes here in this mile. And his seed time to beat was 17.22. He should uh, beat that by a substantial amount of time here. Coming into the wall and hitting the wall at 16.48.19. That, my friends, is a 34-second drop. That is very impressive for this time of the season, even. And uh, about to, looks like it is going to be Michael about to hit the wall. Mikal uh, goes 17-27-72. That is a 58-second drop. So that's pretty impressive, too, for a second-place swim. And third place will go to Joe Leonard, who goes 17.48.38. That's a 30 second drop. And Landolt goes 18.26, which is a 34 second drop. So again, all very good uh, drops in time there for the participants. <coughs> We're gonna transition now back to uh, not quite so long of events here. I'll be able to stay with you. We're gonna do the women's 200 yard freestyle. We'll have two heats of that. It'll be Maddie Piper in lane number one. Uh, I beg your pardon, Maddie Piper in lane number two. Claire De DeKivit is in lane number three. Chelsea Engelsma is in lane number four. Grace Pleats in lane number five. And Phoebe Croston uh, is in lane number six. And they're off. Our seed time to beat on this one is Chelsea Engelsman of 20.4, just ahead of uh, Croston at 28.24. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us here on the Biscuit in the Basket YouTube network. Entertaining day it will be, or has been already, as Chelsea at the halfway mark is at 5742. Boy, if she can hold that place pace, she might go sub two minutes. It's going to be close if she's able to do it. She has not gone sub two minutes in her college career yet, so that would be a fine time there. Uh, in that pretty close to that pace is Phoebe uh, uh, Croston, who is at 58 seconds, so two potential sub two minutes here. And being that we're still only in mid-October, that would be very impressive here. Chelsea's at 128.62. If she can hold that third, the 31.20 she hit, and if she has any more zip in that Duda, she's going to go sub two. This is going to be really, really close. I don't know. It's at 144 at her last flip turn. She's at 10 seconds to go with half of the 25. 
53, 54, she's just at the flags. I think she's gonna do it, folks. 57, 58, 59, yes, she did! 159, 78, congratulations. Taking it is Chelsea Engelsman. She goes sub two minutes for the first time in her college career. Congratulations to Chelsea on that fine swim. 159, 78. All right, now in the second heat, and we don't have anybody with a sub two in this one either. So we'll have to remember Chelsea, she could end up winning that event. It's uh, Julia Mizik is in lane number two. Kennedy Derenborough is in lane number three. Grace Bobbledyke is in lane four. Angie Gomez Garcia is in lane number five. Riley Poe and Amber War Warak is in lane number seven. We'll keep an eye on the times. That was exciting, folks. Wow. A great first 50 for Mizik. She goes 26.84. Almost two seconds ahead of the rest of the pace. Mizik has a seed time of 200.25. But she is really cooking right now, folks. Coming up on that first 100 at the halfway mark. Let's see where she's at. The field's kind of closed in a little bit. At the wall, she's going to be 55.98. That's ahead of the pace that we saw from Engelsman. She's got about a body length and a half lead. On the last flip turn, she's at 111. Folks, she's going to go sub two. She is cruising. I, I shouldn't say definite because she's still got 50 to go, but she's at 126.26. That last 50 being a 30, even if she goes 32, that puts her at 58. She looks like she's holding that, though. Heading home right now. Still got plenty of time. Just at 150 right now, inside the final half. At the flags, 54, 55, she's gonna be about 57. And she goes, well, actually 156, 98. Very impressive. Second place also from Davenport with 157, 73 is Gomez Garcia. So some really good swims, third place is Bobbledyke who goes 20058. Now we're gonna go to the first of two heats here for the men of the 200 free. Uh, and we only have two swimmers in this first one. Carter Prull from St. Ambrose is in lane number four and Jonathan Rolwa is in lane number five. These two teammates duking it out in the consolation heat of the men's 200 free. All right, sorry about that, folks. I had a request for, uh, as I finish my coffee now, and it's time to transition into green tea. What is the seed time to beat here? A no time for a Rolwa but a 
And hitting the wall at 147.47 is Rolla. That obviously is a personal best. And 157.99 for Pearl. Now we're going to take a look at the championship heat. It is going to be Escua from St. Ambrose in lane number two. Labernia is in lane number three. Pompous is in lane number four. Setlack is in lane number five. Saints is in lane number six. Mills is in seven. And Schneider is in lane eight. What is our seed time to beat here? We've had a few go sub 150. We've had uh, a 147.88 is our seed time for Setlack. Coming up right now, uh, this will be at the 150 yard mark with a time hitting the wall at 49.91. That is a great time. Thank you so much, Jenna. A big shout out to Jenna, who is my manager here at the Aquatic Center today. She's taking care of me as we are a little understaffed, but not misses a beat as Mrs. McMahon is able to bring me up my green tea and the broadcast can go on. Without Starbucks, it, it might end early. And hitting the wall at 116.70 with 150 to go. Really cruising right now. Ah, much better. Coming in. And lane five hitting the wall. Goes 143-44. That is a four-second drop. Second place goes to Mills, 146. That's a six-second drop. I beg your pardon, a three-second drop for Mills. And we are now underway into the uh, the first heat of the 50 free. It is uh, Leffler is in lane number three. Durr is in lane number four. Evans is in five. O'Grady's in lane six. These are all uh, seed times of not reported. So we're seeing the first one for these four at the college level. It's going to be 26.05 for Durr. She's going to capture it. Second place, as you can see, was O'Grady at 26.50. In heat number two, it's going to be Shoop in lane number one. Creamer is in lane number two. Boric is in lane number three. Parasia is in lane number four. Milanowski is in lane number five. Cassie Scott from Davenport is in lane number six. And Bree Leach is in lane number seven. A great start. Look at that water movement there. And with the uh, new bit rate, you can see it so clearly. We thank you for joining us. If you've not have already liked uh, today's broadcast, please do so. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and smash the subscribe button. And hitting the wall, that is, oh, wow. Parasia goes 26.05. Second place was Boric at 26.14. That's almost a second drop. And now in the championship heap, we have Micah Caspers in lane number two. Kaylin Otteson is in lane number three. Anna Gute is in lane number four. Alasia Pinkowitz is in lane number five. Uh, Bella Earl is in lane six. And Drolema, no first name on that one, in lane number seven. Winning that one on a great swim is uh, Pinkowitz. She goes 24.93. 
That is a full second drop. Second place was uh, Addison at 24.94. And Micah Casper goes 25.55 for almost a full second drop. So some good swims all around there. And now we will transition here into the guys. And there are two heats of the 50 free. In the first one, it is Nathan Anderson in three. Skylar Drolema is in lane four. Nico Valencia is in lane number five. And Henry Van Dyke is in six. These are all St. Ambrose swimmers. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see a St. Ambrose winner. And it's probably going to be lane five. It is just by a hair on his chinny chin chin. 22-16 to 22-22. So Nico Valencia takes the W in that first heat. 22-16, that's a drop of a half a second. Nicely done. 22-22 is a drop of a quarter of a second for Drolema. 23-84 is a half a second for Anderson. And 24-22 is a quarter of a second for Van Dyke. So it was all faster times there. Now in the championship heat, it's Lazia is in lane number two. Gaber is in lane, I beg your pardon. Lazia is in lane number one from Davenport. Gaber is in lane number two from St. Ambrose. Karpinski is in lane number three from Davenport. Warrid is in lane number four. Perzak from Davenport's in lane number five. Jones is in lane number six. Seven is Scholl from Davenport. Eight is Zerhin. And it will be, wow, was that close. Warrid goes 21-25. That is a eight tenths of a second drop. Second place, 2147 is Eric Perzak from Davenport. And folks, he still dropped eight tenths of a second to take second place. That is still very, very impressive. Now we are going to have the first of two heats here for the women's 200 yard IM. Emily Henson is in lane number three. Emma Keith is in lane number four. Riley Poe is in lane number five. And Mallory Brown Rig is in lane number Number six. Oh, there was a psych. Not sure why. Now they're off. What is our seed time to beat on this one here? Twenty-one or two twenty-one eighty-nine. So we'll keep an eye on that one. That is from Emma Keith. And as I mentioned earlier today, uh, unlike the medley relay in the IM, you start with the butterfly and then you transition into uh, your next portion is the backstroke breast and then free. This is a pretty good heat here right now. It looks like Lane number six has the lead from Davenport, Mallory Brownrig. But it's still very close as we're coming up on the halfway mark. It is 108.94, 110.75. So Brownrig just over Keith as they transition to the breaststroke. And this is usually where you see the big differential. And man, she's opened up a two body length lead at the first flip turn of the breast. And hitting the wall at 146.88. Second place is Keith at 152. So a six second advantage right now for Brownrig as she goes into the front crawl, the last leg of the IM. And hitting the wall with a time of 221.38. Nice swim there. For a four second drop for Mallory Brownrig who wins the consolation heat. 
Second place goes to Keith at 229. And that's gonna bring us up into the second heat. Horvath is in lane number two for Davenport. Stannert is in lane number three. Henson is in four, Underwood is in five. Croston is in six, and Artabe, Artabe is in lane number seven. As we are in the, starting off obviously the butterfly. At the first wall, it's a battle between Stannert and Underwood. And it's, it's every time they come up, it's uh, switching back and forth between the two. Sneaking in is Artabe. And at the wall, it is 2771 for Stannert, 2783 for Underwood as they're now into the backstroke. Taking a peek right now. It's about a body length advantage right now for Underwood as they get ready to transition into the breaststroke. Let's see if she has a strong breaststroke here. She hits the wall. And she was at 59.65 to 102.23 and 103.70 for Horvath, who snuck back into this one, along with 103.16 for Artabe. Let's see who's the best breaststroker here. And what is our time to beat if we had sub two minutes on this one? We have not. It's gonna be, it's gonna take a remarkable 50 in the freestyle. In fact, uh, now we've passed the, the time here. But with the lead, it is Underwood at 138.11, 139.81, Artib 142.33. As they are making their way home. And it looks like uh, Underwood is going to capture this one. Inside the flags, hits the wall. 208.90 for Aubrey Underwood. That is a five second drop and a nice swim. Second place, uh, Stainart, who goes 212.01. Third place, Artabe at 214. That's a personal best. Horvath goes 221. That's a three second drop. Let's transition into the men's IM, 200 IM. The first heat is going to be entirely made up of St. Ambrose. Thomas Noller is in lane number three. Vincent Mio is in lane number four. Sam Gilham is in lane number five. And Mickey. Hasim is in lane number six. <clears throat> now the crowd is slowly but surely continuing to sneak in here. <clears throat> I'd say we're getting <clears throat> close to, <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Uh, about a uh, about 200 fans here. Let's see who's going to have the lead here at the halfway mark. It's Hasim at 54-16. As they're into the breaststroke. Now his, his advantage, folks, is about three body lengths. He is really rocking and rolling here. Hits the wall at 128.02. He uh, should be on pace for about a 150, <clears throat> maybe a one, 151, maybe lower. We'll see. About a 153 now. Uh, 
And taking that first heat with a time of 155.51, it is Miki Hasim, 155.51. That's his personal best. Second place is Thomas Noller, 205.14, a personal best. Third place is Vincent Mio at 211.07. And Sam hits the tape at 218.92. Getting ready for the championship heat right now. All right, let's take a look at that. We're going to have Robert Hall in lane number one from Davenport. Garrett Sims is in lane number two. Alvaro Ruiz de Canis is in lane number three. Marit Usoff is in lane number four. David Sizgail is in lane number five. Sebastian Pereira is in lane number six. Brandon... Petrazin is in lane number seven, and Taden Blair is in lane eight. This is a full house heat here. <clears throat> Coming in from the butterfly here. Let's say who's got the lead at the fly. And it was 2440, I believe, for Sizgail. As they're in the back crawl. And now at the halfway mark, it is 5301 for Ruiz, Ruiz Decanis, just ahead of his teammate Sizgail at 5335. Taking a look here where they're at on the breaststroke. Now also sneaking into that is Yusuf. Into the freestyle we go with a slight lead there for Siskeil at 126.82. They're duking it out from first to third place at the flip turn. It is really close. The seed time to beat here. And this 200 IM is uh, 159.68. And it looks like Sizgail is going to have it. Let's see the wah. It is 154.86 for Sizgail. David Sizgail. And folks, that is a uh, almost a six second drop. Second place goes to Ruiz DeCanis who goes 155.14. That's a five second drop. So some some great plays all around there. Great swims. Uh, Usoff goes 155.23. That's a four second drop. 200.5 is a two second drop for Brandon out of lane seven. All right, we're having a 15 minute break here after the IM is a scheduled break time. So we're going to kick it to the music. I'll keep it on right here for you, and we'll be back on the Biscuit in the Basket YouTube network. Maybe. <laughs> All right, here we go. We'll be back.
And we are back, folks, as we are now into the 200-yard butterfly. We have three swimmers in this first heat. It is Amber Warwick is in lane number three. three. Chelsea Engelsman is in lane number four. And Bella Earl is in lane number five. At the halfway mark, it is Engelsman with a 30.06, followed by a very tight second place between Warak and Earl. Seed time to beat on this one is 216.23. And now at 104.02, is Engelsman having a, she's holding that 33.96 and actually duking it out is Warwick and Earl at 32.82 and 32.84 respectively. Those are two very good, uh, I mean those two are really within a, about a half a body length of each other. Engelsman now just really opened up her lead in this heat. Hits the wall at 139.77. And we are just over the two minute mark, making the way home. Is she going to best her career best? It, it's going to be close at 13, 14, 2, 16, 39. And that is exactly her career best. So nice job there by Chelsea Engelsma. Takes first place in this consolation heat. And now we are coming into the championship heat here. Let's take a look at the participants. Wow, they got that one off quickly as it will be. Uh, Shank is in lane number two from Davenport. Adams is in lane number three. Antonozis is in lane number four. Wagner's in five. Glasgow is in six. And Bobbledyke is in lane seven. At the first lap, it is 29.30 for Wagner. Very close uh, first 50. They're kind of uh, pacing each other or drafting, if you will. And at the wall once again, it is 102.1 for Wagner, 102.29 for Antonazis. Working their way back. Seed time to beat in this championship heat is 211.23 for Wagner. Goodness. 
at 135.66 with a 33. So she might be on pace for a personal best, but it'll be close. And hitting the wall, taking first place at the time at 209.01 is Wagner. That's a two second drop. Second place is Antonazis, who goes 212.35. That's a two second drop. Third place was Shank at 214.68. And now we are going to get into our first of two heats here, the men's. 200 yard butterfly. We're gonna have four competitors in this first one. It is Pompeo is in lane number three for Davenport. Santiago is in lane number four. Ruiz is in lane number five. And Leonard for Davenport is in six. So we've got Davenport in lanes three and six and St. Ambrose in four and five respectively. Seed time to beat in this heat is 206.65 for Santiago. Coming up on the first 50, it is 26.57. And hits the wall. This, is, uh, this has been a good race so far, but about a full body length and a half lead for Santiago as they are at the halfway mark. He has a 57.20, 59.10 for Ruiz, 1.0019 and 101.5. Again, needing to beat, the, uh, to beat his seed time. He's going to need to be about 134 when he hits the wall here. And he's at 129, so he's looking for a personal best. We might see a few here. Coming up on the last wall at the 146 mark. Does he have 14 seconds to get back on this last 25? Six seconds to go. I don't think he's quite going to do it. Looks like about a 2.02 here. Two minutes inside the flag. It's actually closer to 2.04 now. 2.05 even. 2.05.12. But that's still a second and a half drop. Nicely done for Santiago. Javier Santiago goes 2.05.12 to capture that first heat. And that'll bring us to the second heat here, which... We'll have in lane number two, Carson Maxwell, Grant Sandet is in, Sandstedt is in lane number three, Juan Gomez is in four, Eric Perzak is in lane number five, Will Walker Rozo is in lane number six, Gerald Labernia Ohms is in seven, and Luke Spruill is in lane eight. Coming up on the first 50 here. Out of lane number five, Eric Perzak is at 2526. Juan Gomez is at 2563. Very close between first and second here. And they are still nip and tuck on each other. We'll be going into the 100-yard freestyle. We'll have three heats for the girls at the conclusion of this one. Now it's about a three-quarters of a body length lead for Perzak as they're coming up on the final 50.
Wow, opening it up right now. Hitting the wall at right around 137. We are definitely going to have a, uh, a sub two. Just how much sub two? This is really remarkable fast swim. He's going to go 150, 177. Wow. That is a three second drop, folks. Second place goes to Sandstedt, who goes 157.02. And that is a five second drop in his first sub two minute run. Three is Gomez, 157.71. That's a five second drop. So some just. That's uh, some really, really good fast swimming here. Now, as I said, we're going to go into the 100 yard freestyle. This is going to be the All St. Ambrose Heat with Steinkamp in lane number three, Henson in four, and Shoop in lane number five. Back 50, the lead right now at 28.05 for Steinkamp. Her best, to, uh, actually, uh, seat time to beat is 103.45. We're definitely on pace to see better than that. Heading home right now. Steinkamp is going to shatter her personal best. And hitting the wall at 58.98, nice. All right, uh, I'm gonna have a score update for you here in a minute. As we get ready for the second heat of three, let me do first the introductions here. We have Earl in lane number one, Melan <laughs> Malinous uh, Melan Jeez, oh Pete, easy for me to say. Claire Malinowski is in lane number two. Boric is in lane three. Grinter's in four. Pleats in five. Drolema is in lane six. Casper's in lane number seven. And Leach is in lane eight. Taking a look at the scores through the 200 fly. In the, uh, we'll start with the women's. It is Davenport over St. Ambrose, 78-33. Davenport over Eastern Illinois, 86-23. And St. Ambrose over Eastern Illinois, 62-50. And the boys, this is Nip Tuck. It is Davenport 57, St. Ambrose 54. So some lots of action still going on here to find out who's going to win these. Because uh, technically these are three duels. It's not just a try per se. Taking that first heat, or excuse me, the second heat is Autumn Grinter, who goes 53-20. That's a two-second drop. Second place was Casper, goes 56-76. That's a three-second drop for Micah Casper. The Jenison standout swimming in her third year for Davenport. And now we have our championship heat. It's going to be Aubrey Underwood for Davenport in lane number two. Kaylin Otteson is in lane number three from Eastern Illinois. Bryn Kiley from St. Ambrose is in four. Emil Helgren is in lane number five for Davenport. Emma Keith is in lane number six from Eastern Illinois. Molly Durr is in lane seven for St. Ambrose. At the halfway mark, it is Helgren at 26.03. But there were four swimmers in the 26-second range. So this is going to be Nick Bentuck going into that back 50. I would say Helgren still has the lead at the final flip turn. But just by the hair on her chinny-chin-chin, chin, now it's going to be a dogfight all the way back. Too close to call from my angle here. No better on yours. Inside the flags at 51-52. It's going to be Helgren, 53-94. That is a two second drop, congratulations to Helgren, her 53.94. Emily Helgren wins the, the 100 yard freestyle 
with a personal best, 53.94. Now it's the boys' turn to duke it out. Ben Patterson's in lane number two. Garrett Sims is in three. Henry Van Dyke is in, I beg your pardon, Ben Patterson's in two. Nobody's in three. Garrett Sims is in four. Henry Van Dyke is in five. And Truett Landolt is in lane six. This is a weird configuration. Must have been a light scratch. They're all, this first heat is entirely made up of St. Ambrose swimmers. And we will have the championship heat after this one. Comfortable re lead right now. Out of lane four. It's Sims who goes 50-32. That's a second and a quarter drop. Second place Landolt, 51-77. That's a personal best. 52-43 for Van Dyke, and that's a uh, two-second drop. So, again, a heat entirely made up of personal bests. We love to see that one. Mikhail Nizalik is in lane number one for Davenport. Gonzalo Sainz is in lane number two for St. Ambrose. Micah Scholl is in three for the Panthers. Lane number four is Benny Sirhin from St. Ambrose. Kevin Mills is in lane number five. Jonas Fries is in lane six. Colin Jones is in lane seven from Davenport. And Lucas Ascua is in lane eight. And it was so close, too close to call. I think Kevin Mills had it at the first 50. As they're heading back on this final 50 by about a head length, head and shoulders perhaps. It looks like Kevin Mills, he's trying to beat his personal best of 49.20. And he will. 46.86 to take first place. That's a two and a half second drop for Kevin Mills. Congratulations as he's going to capture first. Benny is going to get second with a 47-32. And for Benny Zarhin, uh, that's a second plus drop. So some again, some really good swimming. All right, we are going to transition now into the first of two heats of the women's 200-yard backstroke. Grace Pleats in lane number three. Michaela Muir is in lane number four. Paloma... Paraja is in lane number five, and Ava Kramer is in lane six. I'm looking, do we have a, did we have a scratch? I'm quickly counting, I was looking at my heat sheet. No, they're all four swimmers are there. Thirty-two twenty-five to thirty-two twenty-six. Muir and Persia are within one hundredth of a second of each other at the halfway mark. Sorry, fibbing. It's not the one hundred backstroke. It's the two. So at the one quarter mark. Now we're coming up on the halfway mark, and it looks like we have a change in the leaderboard as Paloma Perja is going to be in the lead at the halfway mark with a time of 106.15. She's got about a second lead over Michaela Muir. Uh, thank you for joining us here. On the Biscuit in the Basket YouTube network, it's my proud pleasure to bring you Davenport Swimming. We'll be back here in about uh, uh, three weeks. The weekend before Thanksgiving, we will have the third annual Don Kimball Memorial uh, Swim Meet, an invitational here that Davenport hosts. And uh, I'll have the action for you Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No diving on Friday. We'll have two heat, or excuse me, two sessions on Saturday and Sunday, respectively. And uh, more information will be available on the Biscuit in the Basket YouTube network. If you plan on uh, joining that meet and you want to watch it, 
If you have not already subscribed, please do so as you'll be able to get the information as soon as it is made available. Congratulations, Paloma Parge goes 215.82 to capture the first heat. Wow. I just realized that's a 12 second drop. Muir goes 221.56. That's a one second drop. Third place is Pleat. And a personal best for Kramer. If she can do this here in the next seven seconds, will she? I think she will. She hits the wall at 255.29. That's a personal best. So three of the four swimmers with uh, personal bests, PBs. And now we go to the championship heat here of the 200-yard backstroke. It'll be Rebecca Wallace for Davenport in lane number two. Erica Baber is in lane number three for Eastern Illinois. Riley Loeffler is in lane number four for St. Ambrose. Alicia Pinkowitz is in lane number five for Davenport. Olivia Veal is in lane number six for Eastern Illinois. And Caitlin Pierney is in lane number seven for St. Ambrose. We'll have two heats of the men at the conclusion of this. And that's a big lead right now out of lane number five for Pinkowitz from Davenport. She's at 29.06. If she can hold even close to that, she should be able to beat her personal best of 2.10. Her teammate, Rebecca Wallace, was at 30.62. Just actually behind Baber, who was at .4. Ugh. stand up here. If you haven't figured out where I'm at here, folks, I am on the three-meter platform, which is such a great place to, to do water polo and swim meets here at East Kentwood. Problem is, when I have a college meet that has both one-meter and three-meter, I can't be up here, which uh, that's a, a bummer. I think... Still debating over where I'm going to be for the uh, the Kimball. We'll figure it out. 31.88 for Pinkowitz at 132.12. Uh, Wallace is at 135.25. And then Baber at 138.59. As they are now into their final 50. And about to hit the wall, it is Alicia Pinkowitz who goes 203.90. Folks, that is a seven second drop. Second place is Wallace, 206.92. That's a five, just under, or just over five and a half second drop. And here we go, the first heat here, the consolation heat for the men. Looks like we had a late scratch, so it'll be Carter Prull in lane number four. Nathan Anderson is in lane number five. They are both from uh, St. Ambrose. Sorry about that, folks. 
I'm also the aquatics director here at East Kentwood, so occasionally I have to deal with a issue on the pool deck or at least uh, answer a text on what to do. All right. Let's see what is the seed time to beat here for these two. 210.93. Uh, they should be in a, this will be interesting. Prohl has a, almost a body length and a half lead over his teammate Anderson. They're coming up on the flags right now. Both look like a, actually closing the distance here. It is 207.95. That's a three second drop and Anderson goes 209.28. That's a seven second drop. So a couple of personal bests there for Prohl and Anderson, respectively. Congratulations, though, Carter Prohl. He wins the consolation heat. Now, the championship heat of the men's 200 yard backstroke. It'll be David Schneider in lane number two. Jacob Karpinski is in lane number three. Michael Taylor is in lane number four. Marcel Setlack is in lane number five. Igotitz. Munoz is in lane number six. David Sisgail is in lane number seven. And Ryan Safta is in lane number eight. Seed time to beat on this one is 155.64 for Setlak. Karpinski's at 158.23. So we should see a couple at least of sub two minutes here. Thank you for joining us here in this uh, tri-meet between our friends uh, here. Uh, obviously, the host is Davenport University, but joining them is Eastern Illinois and St. Ambrose, and we thank you for joining us. At the first lap, it will be lane number five with the lead set lack at 55-11. On his heels, though, is Sisgail from Davenport at 55.80. And then Karpinski at 57.28. This is going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Hope you are enjoying this stream. As we are now at 123.48 on a 2837 for Setlack and a 29.97 and 125.77. Karpinski went lower, 29.41 for 126. So now first through third on this one is going to be really, really fun. Let's see how many personal bests we get out of this. About to hit the wall. And it's a 150.58 for Marcel Setlack. That's a five second plus drop. Second place goes to Karpinski who goes 155.64. And that's a three second drop. Third place is David Sisgail who goes 155.83. Three Davenport swimmers with personal best take first, second, and third respectively. All sub 156. Spectacular swims, congratulations. Now we go to a slightly longer event here. We're going to transition into the 500-yard freestyle. It is going to be Antonanzis is in lane number three for St. Ambrose. Horvath is in four for Davenport. And Poe is in lane number five for Eastern Illinois. First of two heats here. This is going to be about six minutes. This is going to give me a chance real quickly to go to the restroom. We'll be right back here in a moment. Keep it here on the Biscuit in the Basket YouTube network.
All right, fans, welcome back here. Joey Southern with you on the Biscuit in the Basket YouTube network. We are in the first of two heats of the 500. Holding, uh, let's get caught up here. 32.74 for lane number three. We'll see where the leader is in lane number four, Leah Horvath. I think she's still holding. Oh, actually, she may not be the leader. That's a 35.36. It's hard to see, hard to tell when you're watching a long distance event here. Yeah, I, th I think it's uh I think it's Lair Antonanzis is in the lead. She's not had a time yet in the 500. This will be her first college time. And she takes it with a, <laughs> which might be as good as the, the championship heat next at 519.44. Horvath was trying to better a 545-23, and she will with a 537-23. So that for uh, Horvath is a eight second drop. And then 548-48. Wow, a 13, 12, 25 second drop. And that one for Riley Poe. All right, it's going to be Julia Mit, uh, Mizik in lane number two. Phoebe Croston is in lane number three. Annalise uh, Bowser is in lane number four. Angie Gomez-Garcia is in lane number five. Kennedy Darambor is in six. And Amber Warrick is in seven. And we'll be back once again.
All right, congratulations goes to, I believe that was, oh man, I'm, my, my notes are all over the place. Angie Gomez Garcia from Davenport who goes 5-12-70. That's a five second drop, good enough for first place. Second place goes uh, to the person to her left, uh, Kennedy Dorensburg, and she goes 534-76. Third place is Croston. Fourth place is Mizik, who goes 5.45. I'm wondering if these times are off. They look a little slower than the seed times. We will only have one heat of the men's 500 here. And in that one, and this is a wide variety of seed times here, everywhere from in the four upper fours to the low sixes. So uh, we have Walker Rozo is in lane number one. Maxwell's in two. Petrazin is in lane number three. Gomez is in four. Ruiz De Canis is in five. Uh, Rowa is in lane six. Lize is in seven. And Spruel's in eight. We'll be right back once again, folks.
Joey Sutherland back with you here. You can hear that bell ever so briefly in the backdrop. That lets us know that we are into the final, um, the final version here of the, uh, or final 50 here of the 500. And we are coming in. It's still pretty close, although I would say it is uh, uh, Gomez with the lead for St. Ambrose and lane number four as they're inside the flags and he's going to hit the wall with a time of 446.40. That is crazy. Really cutting into that was Ruiz DeCanis, who goes 446.83. That's a nine second drop for Alvaro and for Juan Gomez, that is a eight second drop. So some great swims. Third go place goes to Brandon from Davenport in lane number three. He goes 454.78. That's a eight second. And we're going to have another quick brief intermission here before we, we start. We'll be right back. Keep it here.
If you don't know, then let me show you. Welcome back here, sports fans. Joey Southern with you. Getting set to start the women's 200-yard breaststroke. We have two heats of it. Claire Dekivit uh, is in lane number three for Davenport. Mallory uh, Brownrig is in lane number four. Molly Durr is in lane number five. And Emma Keith is in lane number six. Seed time to beat here is 238-16. At the first 50, it is 33-14 for Dekivit. 33-40 for Brownrig. And right on their heels was Durr. It's now 111.29 for Dekivit, 111.87 for Browrig, 112.61 for Durr. They are all just literally on about a straight line with each other. Thank you for joining us today. We got about the final 15 minutes here of this meet. And the key it looks like she'll continue to hold the lead at 152 flat, 152.54 for Brown Rig. Brown Rig and uh, Durr is at 153.02. They are just really pacing each other. Last turn. Dekivit just ahead of Brownrig. But now it, it's, I tell you what, they, they're they two teammates, but don't think for a second that they don't both want to win this race. 
in the Constellation Heat. It's going to be Dekevit at 233.12. Brown Rig at 233.75. Molly Durr at 239.26. So for Dekevit, she drops six and a half seconds. Brown Rig drops. She drops five seconds, so some, some good swims, good drops. All right, now in the championship heat here, the 200-yard breaststroke, it is Abby Wampler is in lane number two for Davenport. Corinne Stainart is in lane number three. Bridget O'Grady is in lane four. Ella Wagner for Davenport is in lane number five. Claire Melanowski is in lane number six. And Kate Henson is in lane seven. Seed time to beat on this one is... 228.23 for Wagner. Getting ready to hit the wall at the halfway mark. It is going to be Wagner at 109.11. Just ahead of 109.53, 109.54 by Stannert and O'Grady. Good race here right now. These top three competitors are really duking it out with each other. As we're getting ready to hit the next wall, final wall, in fact, before they make their way home. At about the 2.05 mark, there it appears to be Wagner. Wagner's lead is about a, maybe a torso up as they inside the final flags. Four yards to go, and it will be Ella Wagner hitting the wall at 223.12. That is a five second drop. Stainart goes 224.14. That is a six second drop. O'Grady 226 is a three second drop. And we will transition here into the men's. Let's take a look. We have Joe Leonard in lane number one for Davenport. Thomas Noller is in lane number two. Robert Hall is in lane number three. Marat Usoff is in lane number four. Owen Stender is in lane number five. Ben Patterson is in lane number six. Micah Scholl for Davenport is in lane number seven. And Tayden Blair is in lane number eight. Seed time to beat here is 213-16 for Owen Stender. At the wall, the first wall, it is 29.32 for Hall, 29.41 for Usoff. Oh, I forgot about Stender's 28.66. Stender now actually opens up his lead slightly. Uh, let's see when they pop up after that turn. He's got about a, just short of a body length lead. At the wall again, it is 10027 to 10190. Stender over Usoff. <laughs> it's 
Stender now with a body length and a half lead as he hits the wall. Owen is at 132.43 with his last 50 to go. And hitting the wall, taking the event with a time of 2.06.14 is Owen Stender. That is a drop of seven seconds. Second place, Usopp, goes 2.09. That's a nine-second drop. Third place is Hall at 2.10.70. That's a five-second drop. Now we are into the final two. The, the final two events of the day, they are the women's 200 yard freestyle relay, which will have Saginaw C in lane, or excuse me, St. Ambrose C in lane number one. Davenport's B is in lane number two. Eastern Illinois is in lane number three. That's their A. The St. Ambrose's A is in four. Davenport's A is in five. Eastern Illinois' B is in six, and St. Ambrose's B is in lane seven. As we transition here, this is the sprint relay. It's a good race right now, as it looks like uh, trying to look at the time. 49.19 for Eastern Illinois, 49.70 for Davenport. As we are into the third leg. Looked like opening in the lead right now is going to be Eastern Illinois. They're going into the anchor swimmer at 114.06. 115 flat for Davenport. They're down by uh, a decent amount there, about a full second. As we're on the final flip turn. Holding that lead for East, Eastern Illinois. And hitting the wall with a time of 138.61. That is a seven second drop and a great swim. Second place goes to Davenport, 139.59. That's a three second drop. And that's gonna bring us to our final race of the afternoon, the men's 200 yard freestyle. But first, let me give congratulations on that one to the Eastern Illinois team of Autumn Grinter, Kaylin Addison, Izzy Glasgow, and Olivia Vale. Now to the men's 200 sprint relay. It'll be St. Ambrose in one. That's the E. St. Ambrose C is in two. Davenport B is in three. St. Ambrose A is in four. Davenport A is in five. St. Ambrose B is in six. St. Ambrose D is in seven. And St. Ambrose F is in lane eight. Wow. So pretty much it's a uh, Davenport is only in lane number three and five. The rest are St. Ambrose. And right now it is uh, 2139 for Davenport, 2157 for St. Ambrose. Getting ready for the next exchange. Looks like Davenport's gonna hold the lead with a 2108 for a 42-47. Man, they are, you can just see the water chopping. Hard to see the swimmers because they're moving so fast. Now remember the cool thing about the uh, freestyle, especially on these sprints, you're gonna see a water, a lot of water resistance because they're going so fast and they, it doesn't really matter. 
into the anchor swimmers at 104-44. Davenport with an ever slow slight lead over actually the St. Ambrose B as they're on the final flip turn. Now they're going Cougar for Coco Puffs. Who wants this one? I think St. Ambrose is retaking the lead. It's hard to see. They're inside the flags. Inside five, four meters, three meters, two meters, one. And it's St. Ambrose at 125-45. 125-90 for Davenport A. Uh, St. Ambrose B is at 126.03. A spectacular swim there. Uh, 125.45. That's actually a half a second drop for uh, St. Ambrose for Davenport. That's a two second drop, but congratulations to Hassam, Jones, Gabber, and Warrett. They again go 125.45. And now all we're waiting for is the final scores. Remember, we'll have three. All right, we'll get these scores. I'm waiting for Brandon Graff to convey them to us before we wrap up our broadcast here today. Still waiting for this final results here. All right, still waiting for that final score here. I want to thank you for joining us, though. If you have not, them down and put in the manager's fridge. Fridge. All right, still waiting for that final. Final score here. Apparently there's going to be an exhibition swim here or a uh, time challenge. Not, I don't have any information on that yet. I'm trying to get it for you. There's a quick com, huge uh, conversation going on with uh, two of the officials. One who's already got his clothes on, ready to get out of here. And now you hear the crowd chanting, let them swim, let them swim. That's a bad reference to the uh, late 70s Bad News Bears movie. Uh, So now all the cool down people are going to have to move to the diving well. They're going to get charged overtime for this one. <laughs> Just kidding. Not, but kind of. All right. Looks like at least one Davenport swimmer, maybe two. Nothing on the scoreboard. There they go. I, I don't even know what event they're swimming. It looks like the butterfly, but at what level, I don't know. They're coming back right now, moving so gracefully into the water.
whoever is in lane number, I think it's lane four, has the lead. I suspect this is a 100-yard butterfly. If it is, this is going to be the finish right here. And it is. So a 52-36 to a 54-27 and a 57-16. All I'm waiting on, folks, here is to give you the final scores before we wrap up. The anticipation is killing me. You can also read a full wrap up about this on the Davenport Athletic website. Uh, they will have a write up of today's uh, swim meet, the, both the boys and the girls. And, and while there are three teams here, it wasn't a true tri meet, it was three dual meets. So it's essentially Eastern Illinois versus St. Ambrose, Davenport, Davenport versus Eastern Illinois, and also the Panthers doing battle with St. Ambrose. Uh, as, as separate meets. So I'm waiting on those right now before I can wrap up this broadcast and uh, make my way home. All right, I just got the uh, final scores here, so let's take a look at them. First in the, the there is no men's uh, swims for the Eastern Illinois, so in the only men, that's Davenport versus St. Ambrose. It is Davenport's men defeating St. Ambrose, 108-96, a very close swim meet. Now on the women's side, first for Eastern Illinois versus St. Ambrose, it's 109.5 to 92.5. Eastern Illinois gets the W. For Eastern Illinois versus Davenport, it's Davenport 139, 63 for Eastern Illinois. A big victory there for Davenport. And Davenport versus St. Ambrose, it's 150 to 54. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to today's uh, swim meet here for Davenport University. Again, we uh, the last week before Thanksgiving, we will have the Don Kimball Invitational here for Davenport, and we hope you tune back in. If you have not punched the subscribe button, please do so, and make sure that you don't miss out on the Kimball Invitational. For Brandon Graff at the scores table, our public address announcer, I'm Joey Sutherland. I want to thank you all for joining us. Until next time, you have a wonderful evening, and we will see you soon. Good day, everybody.